All right, and we're live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 12 of the Raiders Report. Uh, apologize for the lack of content last few weeks, a bit of a hiatus we we're on, uh, just finishing up finals myself, so a little occupied, but we're back on it, and uh, we're glad you could join us today. We got a great guest lined up. Uh, he's a former NDP and Raider forward uh, and the 2019 CCHL championship winner with the Junior Senators. Uh, his talents are now with the Lakehead University Thunderwolves. Jeff Dempster, how are you, and welcome. Glad to be here. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Awesome. Yeah. Appreciate you coming on. So what's your, what's your situation these days? Are you back? Uh, Cause I know you're from Ottawa, right? Are you back home or are you in? Uh, um, like I'm a- actually, I'm out in Thunder Bay right now um, at school. Um, I decided to come back there. I got a pretty good, pretty good house. Um, I got a few, I got four guys on my team that live with me. So uh, oh, nice. we all, uh, we all decided to come up um, in the fall, regardless of if we were playing or not, it was still kind of, up in the air at the time they they were thinking maybe a january start so um we all came back in hopes to like practice a bit and stuff like that yeah. uh, eventually we did end up practicing um for a little bit but a lot of stuff was getting shut down so um i think around december uh that's when that's when uh <laughs> that's when it got shut down fully right. and we like, couldn't use the gym and stuff and oh, so that was, uh, that was obviously tough but uh we've been hanging in there doing, doing home workouts and stuff. And I've gone back home a few times now. So awesome. uh, that's been good. It must be nice. Uh, Cause I know, you know, a lot of guys or a lot of people kind of, you know, go through lockdown. They're kind of alone. Don't have any roommates. It must, it must be nice to kind of have a couple guys around you, keep you uh, company and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. That, that was kind of like the big thing. I, I mean, I could have realistically stayed home with my family and stuff, but yeah, um, just not just hanging out with your buddies and stuff was uh was definitely more fun we did a lot of golfing uh in the fall as well um ended up going to winnipeg one <laughs> one weekend just to uh oh, that's just nice. walk a bit because uh it's super close by so um yeah that was fun brutal situation for golf in ontario right now it's <laughs> it's it's tough yeah yeah it's definitely tough and i got some I got some clubs coming in that I just got fitted for. So, oh uh, no, <laughs> I can't, uh, I can't even use them. So, uh, um, yeah. hopefully yeah, they'll come in fun. handy down the line. I mean, yeah, I'm hoping, hoping by June we'll be, we'll be good to go. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, well, listen, thanks for, for coming on today. I'll, I'll jump into some questions for you. Um, just going, cause I, you know, obviously, uh, from Ottawa, uh, growing up playing in Ottawa, you know, I, I know you went through the sting program. How did you find that experience coming up in this city? Um, it was good. Like, um, hockey growing up was always super fun. I was, I was kind of always on the cusp of making the, uh, triple A team. Um, I was seemed to always be the last cut there for for a couple of years. And then, um, eventually, eventually ended up making the triple A team, my major midget year. Um, my growth spurt kind of only hit later on. I was always like pretty pretty small and uh not very heavy so that didn't play into my advantage and then when I finally had my growth spurt there my minor midget year I was still pretty pretty slim and stuff but yeah no I was always kind of um cut around the the last cut and then uh thankfully made it my last year of um of like kind of the normal triple a system and then it went to the um went to the u18 way with uh with all the uh junior a teams having their own triple a teams so um yeah, it was cool. I got to be a 67 there for, for one year. And, um, my prior experience was just getting like called up from time to time, but that was, that was pretty much it. Yeah. So, so how did you come about uh, playing with the Raiders? Um, so I think can't, can't remember what year it was, but I, I did get drafted there. I think in like the fourth round, if I'm not mistaken, I'd have to look back, but, um, yeah, I got drafted there and then I was, uh, I played on the U18 team um, and uh, Darcy Finley was the coach of the junior A team at the time. So um, he definitely wanted me on his team eventually when it was um, my 18 year, that's when I, I finally made it. I, I thought I had a good shot my 17 year, but um, ended up just getting called up quite a bit and uh, Darcy really liked me. So um, yeah, I set up, set myself up nice for my 18 year old year to play there and um ended up having a pretty good year made the made the eastern canada cup team and stuff so that was um that was pretty solid and then tough year my 19 year breaking my wrist and then um obviously got traded eventually in my 20 years so 
Right. Um, but yeah, uh, no, it was, it was good. Just going back on that that injury, you know, a lot of guys go through stuff like that. And what was your experience kind of making it through that and overcoming it? Um, so that was my second time breaking my wrist. I actually broke it. Um, same wrist? Yeah, same wrist. <laughs> I broke it on the I broke it on the other side my first time. Um and then uh yeah, I mean breaking in juniors is kind of tough. The good thing is we play quite a few quite a few games. Versus breaking it in minor hockey, you, you lose quite a bit there. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was tough. Just um, there's a lot of stairs there in the PN Sportsplex, so I was <laughs> I'd run stairs during practice right. and um, try to go on the bike and stuff. But it's tough, obviously, with your wrist. You can't really do like stick handling and stuff like that. But you can still get your your legs involved, which is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, does that does that come back naturally to you? Kind of the you know you know the handles and stuff like that with your wrist yeah I feel like that was like pretty pretty easy to come back it was it was kind of just the strength strength portion of it like shooting and stuff at the start obviously pretty pretty weak when you're just getting uh the cast off and stuff but um that usually comes back um pretty quickly as far as like nerve nerve damage and stuff like that I I still feel like my wrist is a little a little off but um I mean breaking it twice it's (laughs) That'll do something. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just going back to the Raiders, um, you know, you had a few seasons there, uh, you know, obviously you started up uh, with that UA team, but what was that experience kind of uh, playing those, those seasons there? And how did you find that? Um, it was awesome. I mean, we always, we always had a great group of guys that I, I got along with. Um, eventually my, uh, one of my like childhood friends, well, not childhood friends, but high school and like, um, seven and eighth grade friend, uh, Noah Rowe joined the team too. Um, so that was fun. I got to play with one of my friends and then, um, there's always just like a lot of guys that, that went through there that were, um, that were all pretty awesome. So we always, I found we always had a pretty good, pretty good nu- nucleus. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I enjoyed my time there a lot. So, um, there's definitely no complaints. No complaints. Yeah. Yeah. I get, you know, I get that a lot. You know, I haven't talked to everybody obviously, but you know, a lot of guys uh, enjoy that, that junior experience for sure. And builds a lot of character. And uh, I mean, it's good to hear that uh, that was your experience as well. Um, mm-hmm. So you ended up getting traded junior sense uh, and then won that year. What was that like? I mean, that must've been kind of a crazy series of events. Yeah, that was, it was, yeah, it was pretty wild. Um, our team was struggling a little bit uh, in my last year and I was doing pretty well point wise, um, at the time. So, um, I did end up asking for a trade just cause I kind of wanted to see if I can shake it up a bit in my last year and hopefully make a run at it. So I think Otto was sitting fourth or fifth place at the time, but I, I only live five minutes from Jim Durrell. So I, and, oh. and my cousin, yeah, so I yeah. live really close by and then uh, my cousin had played for the Sens before, and then I had um, I had a few buddies on my team. My my childhood friend Noah was on had, had been traded there. Okay, um, <laughs> reunion there. I knew, like, yeah, I knew like Darcy Walsh uh, pretty well. Knew like Declan Hilton. Like knew quite a, quite a few guys on the team. So um, eventually got traded there when they were in like fourth or fifth place, and then um, we ended up um, finishing fairly high up. So. Um, and then yeah, we kind of just took it from there. Um, we didn't really ha- seem to have any too, too much trouble in playoffs. We beat Canada. Um, I wouldn't say fairly easily. We had our battles with the one game went to triple OT there. You're right. Um, and then we, I think we swept, we swept Brockville. I'm almost certain. And then, yeah, we, we took care of uh, Carlton place pretty, uh, pretty well also um there's a couple games there there's one game we had uh i think they had two five on threes against us and we somehow managed to to pull that game off it was we had a we had quite a few penalties so um yeah we we managed to stick with it still so. and the pk units coming in clutch there two five yeah. on threes that's exactly. that's uh yeah that's a lot of work um so yeah i mean I, I wanted to you know ask you obviously you mentioned those guys that um you know that that were on that junior senators team when you joined was that kind of joining that locker room must have been a pretty easy transition for you yeah i would say it was fairly easy um 
I think the first day I got there, it was, uh, there's a team, a team workout, um, over at the, uh, the Greco, one of the Greco locations. Um, and I went there and I was kind of just chatting with some of the guys. It wasn't, I don't think it was mandatory at the time because it was in the morning and guys obviously got school oh. and stuff. Um, so I went there and kind of just talked with some of the guys and there was a bit of a transition phase there too. They were trading some guys and obviously I was a new guy coming in. So, um, yeah, I mean, being a 20 year old, I guess you, it's not like too, too shocking, I guess. Yeah. Um, you almost come in and there's guys that are younger than you and stuff like that. So it's not really like too, uh, yeah. too intimidating or anything. Um, so yeah, it was pretty, pretty easy transition. I knew, knew quite a few of the guys and um, yeah, the coaching staff there and Marty and, and Koosh and yeah, I mean, all the coaches were, were super nice and stuff. So um, that was easy. Locker room, locker room dynamic was great. And um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's no complaints there. There's um, everyone on the staff was great. So, yeah, you know, um, I talked to some guys who, who played for, for the Sens and um, you know, a lot of them bring up the winning culture they have there and kind of mm -hmm. that, that, uh, that culture they have there that they put on the players. Um, is that something you felt as well while you were there? Obviously you guys ended up winning, but uh, you know, kind of that, that culture that's imposed in the locker room. Yeah, no, we, um, it seemed like, it seemed like no matter when we were playing on Saturdays at home, it wasn't really, no one ever thought we were going to lose. And um, we'd be down games going to the third and like the locker room was always pretty relaxed. Like no one, no one was too concerned. We were always, we were always pretty confident we were going to come back and, and win the game. Um, and we had a lot of guys that could put up points and stuff too. So it wasn't, no one was ever too, um, too concerned. There's obviously some games going in the third, we would, feel like mad at ourselves and um like we gotta do much better than this but for the most part everyone was pretty uh seemed like we didn't lose on saturdays got to go out so, um, <laughs> that must be nice that must be nice yeah exactly like in the pn we had we always had the wednesday sunday games so you couldn't really couldn't go out on the go weekend have, have a good time yeah yeah but saturday you'd, you'd win and we'd hurry up get unchanged and i mean for the guys that were of age we can go out downtown and stuff so um yep. yeah i was good um yeah that's <laughs> awesome on saturdays really <laughs> it's a good incentive to know that when you win you can kind of uh get out and unwind after after the game yeah and then sundays we always sundays was always there's nothing going on and then um monday skate and stuff so um yeah you're always you're always good to you're always good to do nothing on Sunday and just kind of relax. Relax so. it. Get over the coincidental headache you have. Right? Exactly. Um, so you know, you um getting traded at in that season when you did, you obviously played your did you, you know, played your old team. Um what was that like? Did you enjoy that or did you kind of maybe get a little extra physical or um I think we, we lost to Nepean when I got the first game I got traded back. I think I had a brutal game to be honest. <laughs> um, oh no. Yeah, I could have swore it was a terrible game. I always when we were playing OJS in um at the start of the year, we, we got beat up pretty bad, but I I managed to I think we lost like lost by double digits uh in Castleman to them. And I think I, I think, I think we lost like 10 2 or something. I had two goals. So I think I always showed well against OJS. But then when, when I was there playing to PN, I, I had a pretty brutal game, my first one. And then it did uh, translate back the other way. Yeah. And then, um, by the second game around, we played at Nepean Sportsplex. And, uh, yeah, we won, we won pretty good that game. I, I played pretty well. So. Um, there you go. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't super weird, but my brother was on the team with me um my 20 year old year. So um I was still still kind of playing with the, against him and then he got uh he eventually was playing junior B there for a bit uh with the Golden Knights. So Right. I actually uh, yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. Not you know, not many people might know that, but yeah, your your younger brother Bobby uh plays for the Raiders and um you are played and obviously you know you guys must have grown up together in that in a hockey house. It must have been uh, a lot of friendly competitions and stuff like that. Did you did you guys ever get the chance to play together on on uh, on the Raiders? Yeah, yeah, we did first. Um, 
can't remember how many games I was there for, but the first, I think I played 18 games with the Raiders and he was in, he was there with me at the start and everything. So yeah, I played, played quite a few games with him. Um, and then, yeah, he was always, he was always in the lineup for the most part. Um, obviously he was much younger. So um, right. I think that was a seven, that's, that would have been a 17 year. So um, yeah, he was, yeah, it was pretty cool playing with my brother and stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, I was going to ask really like, really how, play. how did that feel? Like, did your, I mean, the parents must've loved it. Uh, how, how did that go about? Yeah. My dad, my dad's always watched like all of our games and doesn't like to miss much. So yeah. Um, yeah, it was a pretty cool experience for him too. So he was able to watch obviously both of us at once and <laughs> he'd have to, he'd have to miss one or the other most of the time, like choosing between who to go watch. <laughs> right. You um, should bring a camera next time, just film the whole thing and then you can uh, Yeah. And then obviously back. with, um, obviously with hockey TV being a thing now, definitely help. You don't have to go on the break. Right. Like if we're playing in Pembroke, you don't have to go or something like that. You can still just watch the game at home, but, um, it's gotta save a lot of gas money for sure yeah it's pretty pretty fortunate in our league too that everyone's close by so you can mm-hmm. you can pretty much make every game um yeah absolutely but yeah no it was definitely exciting for him to be able to watch both of us at once and, yeah uh, he, was, he was definitely happy about that yeah yeah that, that that's honestly a really cool like thing that that happened i mean not a lot of you know siblings get to play together so that's that's uh mm-hmm. Super cool. Um, I wanted to ask you, like, obviously we're, we talk about your brother. Um, did you ever, you know, give him any advice coming into playing junior A? Or... Um, I don't know. The, the th- growing up, he was always, uh, he was always the one playing at the higher level and stuff. And uh, <laughs> yeah, he was always the one playing at the higher level and showing you up a little. Yeah, showing me up, and he was always going to like cool tournaments, and he was going like he went to Las Vegas one year. Oh, that's um, sick! With one of his AAA teams, um, they're called the Lone Stars, and yeah, they they have a bunch of guys. Um, they're on the team now that all play like Division One, um, oh. like Major Junior, like right. um, yeah, all their like a lot of the I'd say about I'd say about ninety five percent of their team is playing at the next level, so um he was always playing with guys that were really good and stuff and he went to tournaments in new york city and um played for like the selects team um so yeah he was doing he was doing a lot of cool stuff when he was younger i was i was always playing like baseball and stuff during the summer um i did play spring hockey but um he was kind of he was more there's definitely some more uh interest there i, I kind of just was playing baseball a lot and stuff so yeah uh, he was definitely sticking hard with hockey and then um yeah so i don't know i didn't really have any crazy advice for him i think he was able to watch a lot of my games and stuff so yeah um he kind of knew what he was getting into and um yeah nothing crazy nothing crazy yeah i was able to give him terms of advice but uh yeah that was it was it was definitely a fun time playing with him so yeah um speaking of advice i mean uh, I always, I'm always interested in uh, getting the most out of these interviews. So, uh, you know, what's a piece of advice that, that you receive, you know, either a coach, player, teammate, you know, anybody uh, that really stuck with you uh, since you started playing? Um, I'd say in terms of like a, a practice standpoint, you'll see a lot of guys that don't like the, <laughs> there's always the cliche line, like practice, like you play and stuff. But I think that really translate uh, translates into games and stuff um mind you i'm sure there's some some all-stars out there that don't need to practice as much as others but right um, there's always stuff you can do away from away from the arena and stuff and um i've definitely learned that especially uh strength training wise and stuff um in the in the past i was always um busy with other sports and stuff and i wasn't wasn't doing the um doing as much off ice and stuff as um but obviously it's become a big thing now and um i would say i mean i don't regret playing other sports and stuff too that's that's always um being a multi-sport athlete is obviously like there's skills that you can take away from from other sports especially like baseball like hand-eye coordination yeah absolutely i was gonna say like you talked about you know playing baseball that's that's huge for for hand-eye yeah there's there's always stuff you can take from other sports and um there's a bunch of guys i play with too and 
growing up they always played um hockey 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 and a lot of the guys just ended up hating hating it by the end of it right they just a little fatigued uh, by it yeah it's fatigued and your hips are hips get tired i mean um there's kind of a fine line between going like going hard and hockey and just like kind of training in other areas and just um taking care of yourself because i mean at the end of the day you're supposed to have fun and stuff and yeah playing all the time isn't uh it's always the best you kind of lose that but uh yeah no i think just practicing like practicing like you play and um that's kind of like the big thing that i learned um a lot of our practices here at lakehead we we have a lot of um like battle practices and stuff like that and you'll when you're winning when you're battling and competing um it's it's tough to lose those in a game um because you get so used to just like going 110 percent in practice and stuff so um that's probably like the biggest thing it just translates into games yeah for sure i mean even guys you know in the show get out there on the ice sometimes work on things uh when nobody else is is out there so you know mm-hmm. that aspect is never uh underestimated for sure um i'll move on to uh you know lakehead and uh thunder wolves um so how did you come about joining the team and and uh you know how did you, how did you end up there um so my last year um with ojs when i kind of got i i was having a lot of interest from like um division three teams and stuff especially my last year um and i was always told like a lot of the cis teams kind of wait till after christmas in your in your last year to right um get some interest and stuff so um it wasn't till yeah about after christmas i started getting a lot of interest from from various um from various like cis teams um and um obviously it's very it's very casual at the start and they're they're still watching um right um and you can just see it now like it's pretty busy um when we go on the road and stuff um and with practices and everything it's tough for coaches i think to just like really watch a player and stuff with everything going on and taking care of their season so um yeah it was just a lot of like um casual conversations and stuff and then um then they really started watching playoffs and stuff and um i wasn't ready to commit to anything until i was kind of done so right. um yeah the further the further we went the more the more interest i got from yeah different right stuff. yeah yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, um, yeah, so in uh, Amherst, when we were in the um, the Fred page, that's kind of when um, uh, Andrew, my my coach right now, was able to go uh, go watch me. Um, and he was uh, he watched uh, Taylor and I, who played on OJS, and he's actually living me with right now, uh, living with me right now. So oh, he's we, one of those roommates. Yeah, so we both we nice. both committed together. Um, so yeah, he was watching us there, and then um, yeah, and then that's kind of when the uh, the interest came about. Um, and then we were kind of just waiting till everything was done, and then um, I was gonna start going on visits and stuff. Um, so uh, we both went down. We both flew down. And my dad came with me too, and. Uh, yeah, we we stayed in one of the hotels here and just toured around. Saw the. Did you get and wined and dined, or was it kind of just like tour on your own ends? No, no, it was yeah, it was pretty good. We got like went to dinner and stuff, and everything was nice. kind of taken care of, so that was good. Um, yeah, it was like a true visit for sure. Yeah, and then um, yeah, what else? Yeah, we we kind of just toured around and everything, and then um, saw the facilities, and um, I was already going to school at U Ottawa and stuff, so um was kind of also wondering about like transferring my credits and everything totally uh, yeah yeah so I talked to like the student center and I mean everything was pretty I liked everything and um it's pretty cool here because a lot of CIS teams don't get don't get quite the fan base that we do um, right because we're like a smaller town and it's kind of like we're like a technically like a major junior team here almost in terms of like people want like the people wanting to come watch and stuff there's definitely uh, more attraction uh for for you guys yeah that's what i've heard yeah. as well yeah so we get i don't know some games will get like close to like 2000 fans and stuff so yeah. that's that's, that's pretty cool and, yeah um, i mean i go to you ottawa so you know I, I try to watch as many games here 
but mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, we're not getting those numbers for sure. I mean, that's, that's really impressive. So yeah, um, that must be a really fun aspect to it too. Like you get to kind of get a little bit more fans in the stands and a better experience altogether. Oh yeah. And everyone gets, everyone gets super excited to come watch our games and stuff. So um, yeah, the fans are great. We had, um, we even had like a teddy bear toss game and stuff. And that was, that was pretty Oh, wild. that's sick. Yeah. That's, that's dope. Mm-hmm. Those are nice. Yeah, so a lot of guys on my team that played major junior and stuff obviously got a bit of that, but uh, no, I was able to. That was the first time I was I had a Teddy Bear costume, so that was um, that was pretty awesome. And then um, yeah, we always had we always had a pretty sweet fan base, so uh, no complaints. And then uh, in playoffs, it would have been nice to go a little further. I heard um, there's some pictures around the uh, around the rink that show like some playoff games when they went when they went deep. Um, I think I think in like 2010 they won the national championship. They're packed, something. aren't they? Yeah, like, and they were like the whole rink was filled. Um, yeah. I think it holds about five, maybe five thousand. So that was like packed to the brim. <laughs> whole town comes out. So yeah, no, it's, that's it's cool. uh, yeah. Those numbers are like insane for you know the teams that you guys are playing in, in in the league that you guys are in. I mean, that's really really impressive stuff. I mean, that small community is so clutch for. Um, yeah. for the team um i only got a few more questions for you um mm-hmm. i wanted to get into the transition because you know going from junior to you know youth sports um what did you find was the biggest difference between play a lot of guys are just like smarter with the puck like um you'll see like a lot of junior games are really like choppy and guys get rid of pucks and like a lot of dump right. and shake there's there's not really any dump and chase in our league um guys hold on the pucks and like a little more structured yeah a little more structured and like um it's mostly mostly top end junior a guys and um maybe not like maybe not like top end major junior because a lot of those guys do do move on and stuff but um right. definitely there's definitely quite a few of those and like even just solid guys that play third line fourth line minutes and it's just like it's a pretty deep league. Like everyone's, there's not really any, um, any weak links and people just snap the puck around and stuff. There was, we play our games against Ryerson. You'd see it a lot too. Like just okay. a lot of like passes and um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a fair share of skill in our league. Um, the, um, a couple of guys on our team played um, Thomas Susto was playing pro right now. He played on our team last year. Um, he won like a mem cup and stuff. Um Shit with Kelowna and um I think it was Kelowna and uh yeah I mean he uh he can snap the puck around he's been to like many NHL camps and stuff so oh uh, nice yeah yeah and then um yeah we had like uh we have a guy named Dan Del Paggio as well who played um with the St. John Sea Dogs and stuff and um played played uh quite a few years in major junior played with the Gatton Olympics and stuff so um yeah real talent there yeah yeah, there's guys. Yeah, there's there's and every, on every team in the league, there's there's about three guys that that can that can play for sure. Yeah, um, they can easily be playing at the next level and stuff. But but some guys want to go to school and and kind of go that route first. Or yeah. um, then you'll see teams out east like UNB who have a lot of guys that could easily be playing at the next level and stuff. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean every team's got those guys and yeah yeah it's just That's strong. Awesome stronger game for sure yeah um so you know i i wanted to ask about the season coming up i mean you know obviously um things are kind of slowly rolling out here in ontario with vaccines and you know kind of leagues are going to start start hopefully returning to normal do you know what the league's going to look like next season do you do you have an update on on what you're going to be if you're going to be playing Mm -hmm. um i think there's like three this is just what i've heard i think there's three proposed this is kind of what our coach was telling us there's three proposed start dates um i think the latest one would be january um i think that one's realistically the most optimistic just kind of waiting till everyone gets um both their doses and stuff right Uh, i don't know if the league's gonna force people to get their vaccines but yeah uh we'll see i'm in Ottawa, I'm in a hot spot, so I'm actually getting mine uh, next Thursday. Oh, nice! Yeah, I already so, registered. Nice. Yeah, getting that over with, and then uh, I think my second dose is end of end of August. So, um, I mean, I travel quite a bit, so <laughs> I 
figured might as well get it. Yeah, um, not a bad idea if you're going around places for sure. Yeah, I think I've I've been on planes quite a bit, which is obviously not something you're supposed to be doing right now. But I mean, um, I got to get to school and back and stuff. And I mean, yeah, you know, people have responsibilities they got to do, and uh, yeah, you, you do what you can. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, getting the getting the vaccine, and then um, yeah, we'll see. I don't I don't know what the the mandates are going to be, but obviously our team's pretty far away. So we fly to, we fly to all our games. Right. Uh, that are, that are away games. So um, I don't think it's very, to be honest, I've had a pretty good experience flying, but um, obviously there's, there's probably an increased risk. I'd say. Um, yeah. You know, there's all, there's always worry with, with travel and, and stuff, but they're, mm-hmm. they're pretty relatively safe with it. Um, yeah. But yeah, always, always a little worry. Um going in uh awesome yeah i mean um as i kind of wrap up this this episode here uh i kind of got one more question for you i kind of ask every every guest this question um because i again like i like to get the most out of these and kind of get as much information out to you know anybody could be listening trying to get some advice and stuff so um what is a what would you if you could go back to when you started getting serious about playing pro and kind of uh, getting serious about playing what would what piece of advice would you give yourself hmm. it's a bit of a curveball usually people uh, yeah, take, awesome. take a minute <laughs> mm-hmm. i don't know i think i think you kind of take it for granted a bit sometimes um i think just every day kind of committing to it you only have so you only have a very short uh time frame to make it happen right i mean um obviously there's late bloomers and stuff but um yeah i don't i mean i i didn't really get um get going till i was kind of uh later on in the process um and obviously guys fade out and stuff when they're younger but um yeah i mean i, I think just sticking with it um even if you don't make even if, if you don't make that team the first year and stuff like that it's just kind of um, staying with it and, um, eventually things work out. I mean, if you're a hard worker, um, you'll get results at the end of the day. Um, just working on, working on a lot of your skills and, um, and, uh, just being like, just trying to improve your hockey IQ and stuff and being a student in the game. Um, totally. Yeah. You'll, (laughs) you kind of notice when you get, get higher up and the levels and stuff, it's not so much about those like fancy, um those right. fancy work moves and stuff like that you'll still see it but a lot of it's just like puck protection and kind of working on those skills so um i guess that's i guess that's my piece of advice anyways yeah that's awesome i mean i i get a lot of that you know um a lot of guys i chat with it's it's perseverance you know like you got to stick with it it's it's hard work that, that they would go back and tell themselves like hey like you keep working at it um mm-hmm. and you know you put in that effort and you know you keep persevering um, and yeah, you know, you mentioned the technical stuff and it's not so much all these fancy dangles, but kind of working on your core stuff and um, getting that down. So that, yeah, that's a great piece of advice. Uh, I hear that a lot for sure. Um, well, yeah, that's great. Listen, I won't take uh, any more of your time. Big thank you. Uh, thanks again for, for coming by and uh, take some, t- t- uh, some time today, Jeff. Yeah, um, no worries at all. It was, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. I love, uh, I love doing these kind of type of things. So, um, yeah, awesome. to- hopefully we'll get you back someday. And, you know, usually I say, uh, you know, good luck with, you know, good luck with Lakehead. And I also usually say I'll be rooting for you, but as you Ottawa student, uh, if you're playing the GGs, I don't know you. <laughs> so yeah, we'll it's see. not going to happen. I think we are supposed to play them this year, actually. Um, at you Ottawa, but, oh uh, yeah. I don't know what the, the schedule is going to look like. I think we were supposed to go to, uh, we we're supposed to play the East Division a few times. We we're gonna to go to Kingston, Montreal, right. and Ottawa, which would have been nice. My parents could come watch some games and stuff. But, yeah, that uh, would be really nice. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what this. Listen, if, if you're ever playing in Ottawa, I'll, I'll be sure to stop by and uh, boo you from the stands. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course. Uh, all the best to you, Jeff, and, and thanks again. Thanks so much.